Hey folks, so I had a quite a few leftover blackberries. It's not blackberry season. It's not even canning or preserving season. I just had, I just made that spring cake and then I made the birthday cake and I have a lot left over. So I'm just gonna make some jam and I can use that until the garden start growing, producing fruit. I can use it in uh, Victoria sponge cakes instead of strawberries or whatever. So the first thing here is you, I, I only have enough, I think, to make two jars. So I'm boiling my canning jars. It's not like I need to, I mean, this is what you do to preserve things. You don't want any microbes Oops, growing. And the thing is, I don't really, I plan to use these fairly quickly. So I think that if you had just a regular jar like this, you would be fine as long as you eat it on your toast right away. It, um, but traditionally canning is meant to preserve the summer's bounty. Oh, I gotta turn this off and try to get these little lids out. And then when I get that out, yeah, to preserve it all winter. And so you don't want it to work. That goes with canning tomatoes or pickles or anything. Anyway, so I can move this off the heat. Just want to show you that I'm going to I kind of get, you don't really have to do this, but you could just wait for the water to evaporate. But I have the oven on to about 175. And while I make the jam, I'm just gonna put them these in the oven so that they dry out without me touching them with my fingers, which are of course washed, but not necessarily without microbes. Okay, so I have here, okay, so the rule of thumb is one, two, three quarters, uh, one, Oh, 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 I'll, re I'll start again. I'm not using pectin. I don't think you have to use pectin, although pectin is important for certain fruits that don't have enough. Citrus fruits and fruits with rinds have enough pectin in them that you don't need to add. I'm not sure about apples or plums. I'd have to look that up. But I'm doing this kind of English well, let's see what you can see. English version, where the most important part is you, you just cook them. You just cook until there's enough ratio. The water is, the water is um, evaporated, and you get enough pectin uh, to um, water fruit juice ratio. So we're putting that on on medium high. This, and the ratio is one to three quarters, one fruit to three quarters sugar. So that would be one kilo of fruit to three quarters um, of grams. Well, that would be um, 750 grams, wouldn't it? Gotta remember your high school math. Well, middle school math, I guess. And so, because there's only 680 grams of, of um, fruit here, I'm adding only, I used the X over one over 750 equals X over 680, blah, blah, blah. Do the math, and that equals seven, 510 grams of granulated sugar. I'm gonna add that in right away. And, you know, we're going to be stirring and mashing for a while. And it's going to be on a lower heat. I'll put it on medium. And then I have the juice of one California lemon, my last lemon from, from my friends in California. And I have a special tool known as 
the potato masher, but I'm not going to, um, I'm not there, I'm not ready for that yet. That comes when you, let's turn the heat up a bit. When the juices come out, oh, there's a little seed from the lemon. I should have sieved that, but I, I noticed that no seeds came out, only that one. So that's that. And when the juices come out, when this starts to dissolve, I'm gonna mash it a bit with the potato masher. Hey friends, we're back. So you see that there's a lot of juice and that's coming from the berries and the dissolved sugar and the uh, lemon juice, which helps to brighten it up and also keeps the fruit from discovering. Now we're gonna use our special tool known as a potato masher, and we're gonna get more juice, okay? But I don't, I want, I want there to be some berry in the final product. If I were making jelly, which would be similar, I would, mash it all or even use the blender uh, immersion blender and then sieve out all the seeds one could always do something in between which would be to make a jam jelly where you take out scoop out some of the solids fruit with the seeds and then strain the rest through a fine sieve or um, that cloth you use, <laughs> I can't remember the name of it, cheese cloth, that's what it's called. Um, okay, now that you've got a lot of juice, we're gonna, we have to turn this up from medium to medium high and get it boiling, because that's too much juice. There, it's boiling. Okay, so now we're going to boil that. I'm going to give it 10 minutes before, you know, five to I'm just, I'm just, I'm going to eyeball it is what I'm going to do. And then we'll do the plate test. You know, you know what I do um, recommend using the thermometer because remember that 100 degrees C is the boiling temperature of water. I reached that um, immediately, but this last, it's at 104 now. And this last, it went to 103 quite quickly. It took about seven minutes to be boiling, but this last degree Celsius is taking quite a long time. So probably another three minutes. Um, I'm gonna stir just in case the thermometer's in the wrong spot, but I trust it. It's at 104.5. The reason that the boiling temperature can increase above uh, the boiling temperature of water is because of the sugars. Like when you make caramel or, oop. Wow, it does smell amazing. Okay, let's put that back in. But it can't touch the bottom. Don't let it touch the bottom. Just let it get the fruit mixture. It smells amazing. There are um, online recipes. There are like, you know, a couple billion. And they want you to put like cinnamon in or all spice and cinnamon and so on. But because I'm going to be using this in other recipes, I will be adding extra flavor to those and not to my jam. It's just going to be blackberries. And the smell is quite rich. And I'm still only at one. Oh, oh, I saw 105, but now it's back to 103 because I tipped out. Okay. There's no point underdoing it or else it will, will not be jam. It will be um, kind of like a freezer jam, something that doesn't set on its own, that but needs to be frozen. Meanwhile, I have a plate in the freezer and that's so I can chill it down so I can do the, the readiness test, the plate test. I'm presuming that that will happen 
soon. I have 104.5 degrees Celsius, and it is definitely thickening, but I can tell that it's not going to stick on a plate. Okay, it's 105 now. I just want to double check that by moving this around. All right. Because I'm afraid it touched the bottom. Ooh, it's quite hot. You know, when something's that hot, you don't want to be using your hands much. And it is spurting onto my hands. Okay, that's 105. Taking it off the heat. It's splattered everywhere. I'm gonna have to do a little cleanup. I don't know if you can see that. Obviously you can't. Okay, so it's been cooked for about 10 or 15 minutes. And we're just gonna put the jam into the boiled, sterilized jars. I have more that here than I expected. And I also have a bigger mess than I expected with all the boiling splattering going on. But anyway, that's all you do. I have a couple more jars I can um, sterilize. And then, oh, that's hot. Leave a little space. The space will, because it's full of hot, very hot air, will suck this down when it cools because the pressure will be less and you won't have um, any um, working, which is uh, farm language for, what do you mean by farm language for rotting, blooming uh, bacteria to grow. So we have this one, we have this one, and that's the show for tonight. These don't have to be refrigerated until they're open.